There's three words in particular that I like to use. This is what I call quantum counseling. And whether my clients know I'm doing it or not, I'm doing it with them. Now, if they're in a position to, uh, uh, to learn it, I explain it to them. If not, I'm gonna do it with them anyway. This word is superposition. Anybody ever hear superposition? Okay, also should be taught in first grade. I'm gonna go through superposition really quickly for you. If I drew a, an atom, when we get taught atoms and their structure, what are we often told is happening? You have a nucleus and you have electrons orbiting, right? Now, when we think of that, we think of you've got the Earth orbiting the sun or the moon orbiting the Earth, stuff like that. And so you think there's like a circular pattern of some sort. That's not what's happening. They've known this for 100 years. In an atom, you have a nucleus. And then you have an electron that is in an orbit, that part's true, except what the physicists have realized is that one electron is in multiple places at once. So I've got a couple dots here. To make it simple, they found out there's a 17% likelihood that it could be there. There's a 3% likelihood that it could be there. There is a 7% likelihood it could be there all the way up to 100%. Okay. Now, it's not in one place, it's in many places, if you will, it's superposition. It's not one position, it's a whole lot of different superpositions. Okay? That's the concept there. This became known as the wave-particle duality of things, and such that Einstein said, God does not play dice with the universe. This is a fairly famous thing he said a long time ago. And it's because of this, the probabilistic nature of the physical world we live in. It's just about probability. Now, wait a minute, I can't pin down where this electron is inside an atom. We've known this for 100 years. It's just a likelihood of being in a certain place. This is known as superposition. And one of his contemporaries said to him, Einstein, who are you to tell God what to do? Okay. The fact is, the probabilistic nature of the universe works extremely well for therapy. It works extremely well for the world that we live in. It explains stuff like this movie, The Secret, The Law of Attraction. It explains the placebo effect. It explains everything. And I'm going to go through you in a way, through it for you in a way that makes practical sense. Okay? Now, if I said to you, what are you going to have for dinner tomorrow night? What's the chances you're going to have a carrot for dinner? Anybody have a high probability of eating a carrot? Not you. <coughs> high probability. What's your likelihood of eating a carrot tomorrow? Okay. Is it only for dinner? Is it for yes, not for breakfast. You eat carrots for breakfast. I eat carrots all the time. Okay. <laughs> this is why I like donuts. That's why I like donuts. Okay. So there is a probability, but is there a guarantee that you're gonna eat a carrot? Can he might not might he not eat a carrot? So is I could do a probability wave for him on the probability of him eating a carrot and of him not eating a carrot. Okay, so what's the probability of you eating a carrot tomorrow? I'd say eight out of ten. Eight percent. I will give you a million dollars to not eat a carrot tomorrow. See, it just plummeted. Okay? So, as of this moment, is there a certain, what's your first name? Dominic. There's, we could all visualize him eating a carrot tomorrow. We could also visualize him not eating a carrot tomorrow. Do both of those probabilities exist right now? And are there pathways to both of those possibilities? Now, I watched the scientists on the, on the, uh, Morgan Freeman type shows, you know, Down the Wormhole, which I love, by the way, good stuff. And they talk about this as if there's infinite realities, and they're parallel, and there's a you, there's a Dominic in one universe eating a carrot and one not eating a carrot. And I go back to the video game example. Video games are set up such that the programmer gave you a bunch of different alternatives, and if you take left, I always use Pac-Man. If you start out Pac-Man, you can go left or right, right? Now, does the programmer know which direction you're going to go? But does he give you both pathways? If you go right, did bluff still exist? Yeah. Well, eating a carrot and not eating a carrot both exist right now. Tomorrow, you're going to have an experience of eating a carrot or not eating a carrot. Post it on Facebook so we all know. The fact is, this is the practical application of superposition. I could say, I don't think any of you have left yet. But what's the probability that we'll all be walking out the door in the next five minutes? Hopefully very low. <laughs> but there is a probability, three of you could leave, seven of you, all of you, none of us, okay? Would we raise the probability if we saw some smoke coming out from the bathroom over there or something? Yeah. So the probabilities exist. This is the world. This is, have you heard of Schrodinger's cat? 
So this is the explanation that, that Erwin Schrodinger came up with to try to explain this. Wait a minute, if this is true, you can have a cat alive and dead at the same time. Now, if you've all heard it, I'm not going to go into detail on that one. But he says, if this is true, it's called the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum physics, thanks to superposition, you can have a cat that's both alive and dead at the same time. And they said, that's crazy. Do we really live in such a world? Guess what all the science have said for 100 years? Yep, we live in that kind of world. Now, it's not that, I don't think it's that crazy when you think of the, the carrot example. There's a pathway to eat a carrot, there's a pathway not to eat a carrot. That exists right now. There's a pathway for us to walk out the door, and there's a pathway for us to stay. That exists right now. The universe is set up that way. The one you experience is the thing we're going to talk about next, called the observer effect. We'll do that in a second. Now, we, we're always living this. Yes, ma'am? Okay, because I have a carrot and I have a carrot and walk out the door and don't walk out the door. But the cat, alive, is dead. Can you explain that? Okay, this is what, what the experiment, thought experiment that they did was the idea that if a cat is locked inside of a box, with a cyanide tablet or something that has a 50% possibility of releasing its gas. And that cat, before you open the box, is going to be in a condition that's both alive and dead. Because you don't know, like the carrot example, I don't know what he's going to do tomorrow. Both of those pathways have to exist. You understood that, right? So prior to opening the box, the idea is that cat must be both alive and dead because there has to be a pathway for both of those things to exist. Get it? And so th this is what they, they, Schroeder used that as, an, as a reason why this is absurd, because this can't be the case, because that's not the world that we live in, except is there any way to prove that? Because what happens, you open the box, it's called collapsing the wave function. All of a sudden, Dominic's gonna experience one of those tomorrow, carrot or no carrot. You open the box, the cat's either alive or dead. The other state exists, they say, in superposition or in some other, in some other dimension. I say in Pac-Man, if I turned right, I could have gone left. It's just the code. There is another pathway that could have existed right there. Make some sense? Yeah, but it feels like the other choice Remember, we're, we're only experiencing this eternal set of nows, okay? And the fact is that the future is what the possibilities are. Now, this is what I use with addiction, for example. When I say to somebody who's using, in a year, you could be clean, you could be using once a day, you could be using once a week, you could have overdosed and died. All those things exist. Which one you experience is based upon the way your consciousness moves through this next year. so used to thinking like that, that the linear idea is the cat alive and dead at the same time is difficult to grasp. It's sort of the idea of blowing your mind, though, so you can have that, aha, I get it, like you just said. another way, then, of um, explaining what a hologram is, No, you're close. The, the, the best way to perceive the hologram is we're in, we're in a movie right now. I just like to use the Shakespeare line that uh, all the world's a stage and we're merely uh, actors in the, uh, in the movie. It's your soul that's going through the movie, and that's the hologram. A movie has popped up and we're in it. Who would call it a dream? Now, the other use, like you just described, is it's an infinite array of potentials you could be working with here. What I've come to understand that is a giant, Einstein calls it space time. It's a giant block of potentials. And it's like hide and seek. You're weaving your way through it. You know what you're looking for ultimately? Not a carrot. Truth. It's as if we're, our souls were on, in some other dimension. We said, let's go play a really cool game. And we've come down to what I call ego land. And, and truth is hiding and you're supposed to go find it. And the only way out is by finding that truth. Now, there's variations of you that could have chosen other paths. You could be sitting home right now and, and didn't come here. The physicists say, well, yeah, that's true, but I'd say it's true in the 
It's confusing, but it's true in the uh, video game-like way. I could have gone left, but I didn't, I went right. It doesn't mean there's another you in another universe, though. So Steve, if you take the idea of superposition being a world of infinite possibilities, and you weave it into the, the tapestry of spirituality, are we basically saying since spirituality in the essence is truth, or what we're all seeking ultimately is peace, so if we, if we take those infinite possibilities of any point of decision and collapse all of our decision making down onto what, what provides peace, ultimately love, since God is love, if we are doing that, if we're letting our yes be yes and our no be no, we're, we're, we're singularly deciding for peace and love at any given moment, that's the world of infinite possibility collapsed down into the most important decision point. Is that perfect. accurate? Einstein, that's perfect. Einstein has a theory of relativity which is, I'm not gonna get into, but what it basically means is we're all coming at this from a different angle. And that what the core, the common denominator is, are you feeling peace relative to your experience or not? That's it. And the world has that many different infinite possibilities that you're walking your pathway, you're walking your pathway, you're walking your pathway, and we're all gonna end up at the same place called peace. So is this effective for people with Well, okay, here's the thing. What we do is back to the body uh, example. We influence the future, we don't control it, okay? Um, it's also what karma is. If you practiced uh, walking in the wrong direction for a while, you're gonna have to walk that back. And so when I'm dealing with an, an, an addict, for example, that has used every day for the last 10 years, what's the probability they're gonna use the next day? Pretty high. Pretty high. What I tell them is we wanna influence the possibility. That's what we are here to do, influence the possibility. Gandhi says, be the change you want to see in the world, right? Does that mean I can go fix the world, or am I supposed to influence it? I can't fix it, but I can influence it. And if we all did it, he also says the world's healed on the level of an individual. If we all did that, the world would be a better place. So I, I will work with an addict and say, all right, chances are like 98% you're going to use tomorrow. Let's get that down to 97%. Now, why addiction is such a difficult thing for people is because families sit in judgment, because when the person's used, Oh, he's not making any progress. I'm like, you don't realize he went from 98 to 97. That's progress. In three weeks, you get him down to 62%. Still probably going to use, but they're trending in the right direction. Okay. Next thing you know, it's down to 40%, and they actually go some days without using, and that's what I focus on. Instead, people always focus on the, the, the physical aspect, and what you're supposed to do is focus on the actual spiritual. And if they're making a change in that regard, you'll see it reflected back to the body. You'll see it reflected like a mirror or a feedback loop. Okay. I know what was huge for me, Steve, when we met years ago, was for me to understand that there was potential futures that existed where I was no longer in darkness. I think a lot of addicts lose sight that there is a future that is not filled with darkness. And just understanding that tomorrow can be a better day than today was is amazingly powerful. And then um, understanding that next year could be totally different than what this year is opens every door of leaving addiction behind, stepping out of addiction. And so when I, we got into the numbers when I met you years ago, and we talked about all these different, you know, I'm a numbers guy, I've always been a numbers guy. None of it really ever led to anything positive for me, you know, just numbers made sense to me. But when I took those odds and I started saying, okay, well, let's shift my odds, my life odds, you know, instead of me having a 96% chance of uh, following the path of so many other addicts in this town, you know, let's twist those odds a little bit. And now I kind of like, it's like a hunger games. Now the odds are in my favor. There you go. You know? and, and this is the essence of faith the size of a mustard seed can move a mountain. Because that's it again, too. We're talking on the subatomic level, a shift in consciousness manifests a different reality. That's it. And this is how we affect change worldwide, too. We, we, don't, we don't do it by judging others. That's a negative energy. The fact is we do it by making sure that we're pure inside and we see the world correctly the way we should. Thank you.